so welcome back so <coughs> what we thought in the last session is defined randomization why randomization is required how randomization will be uh, and crt environment will be created how the randomization will be looks in a different values so maybe device configuration environment configuration primary input data encapsulated input data protocol exceptions delays transaction status errors and evolutions so we we'll look at on how to do an randomization in a system very lot first we need to create a class we need to define a random variables and then we need to do an random solver uh, then we need to go with an a constraints to limit uh, to the random values uh, to the specific features etc etc and that will be considered with an a true constraint random stimulus that's what we done it here in an a pocket so i am doing for an apb i created a class pocket i defined a random variables source destination and a data so i have a rand c that is a constraint automatically taken up so for an a variable kind so if it is an an manually you want to define so then i will go with a rand class so a rand variable so or a rand data type and defined with an a constraint parameter so i am defining for a source that pocket is limited between 10 to 15 bits so which is defined as an a c right so now how to call this pocket so to your uh, how to call this pocket class to generate your pockets so i am going for a assertion here so i think already you studied an assertion so i am randomizing through an assertion here so such that i will verify and i will get generate the randomized values so i am taking a pocket p the pocket p is the pocket which is taken from this class pocket so which has these variable source destination data and an a kind so i am just putting my pocket like this i have an a source of 32 bits maybe you can call it as your ip pocket so then i have an a destination of 32 bit i have an a data which is a variable data which is covered with uh, eight location of 32 bit then i have an a constrained one which is of an a 8 bit that is your kind this is of an 8 bit this is what the pocket what i am creating so that's why i will just look at on initialize the pocket here so through defining or calling this pocket class here so that pocket class i am defining with an a new values or a new creation this is the new creation one pocket i am creating it as an a new so what i am doing once i created a pocket i will insert the values to this pocket maybe a source value maybe a destination value data kind value etc etc constrained values etc 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 after that i will ask you to transmit while transmitting i will check for this assertion assertion is the technique where you are checking the variable value generation random value generation for these variables so source destination data and data so where it will be taken through your pocket class pocket so i am randomizing those values i am inserting those values so and whenever so there is a change in the values 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 there is a change in the values i will assert that i will assert that so if that value is not having any assertion any change over so then i will say it as an error that is i am unable to randomize this i am unable to randomize this so that's why i will say a fatal error so i am just displaying a fatal error so which has an randomization pocket randomize fade ok 
locate randomized value that is at 0 if it is 1 then the fatal error is true so sorry for fatal the randomization is a true so i am checking only for a 0 which is shows as an error so that is the randomization failed so if it is 1 so then randomization is true so if there is no failure then i will transmit that pocket the whole pocket will be transmitted or taken care to that values this is the simplest uh, analysis of uh, uh, those uh, uh, values so our assertion values so here what i am looking for is an a, a randomized function which returns a zero if an error so uh, if it is found with an a constraint let us say so i am saying so the pocket should be generated through an a source value from 10 to an a 15 if it is not unable to generate between 10 to an a 15 so then it will be displaced an a 0 so if it is without a constraint then it will checks for all the asserted values which is considered here so that is normally an a procedural assertion to check the results so now the zero is founded with the constraints what is given here what is considered how to check the results with from the randomization so normally this randomized function what i am given assigns a random values to any variable in the class that has been labeled as rand or as an uh, rand c so and also make sure that all active constraints are obeyed so what is the thing here so the rand is goes with it will assign the randomized values for source destination this is only a declaration as an data type declaration so where you are generating a value you are generating a value at randomized so rand c so and if you have a different constraint this constraint is also considered this is the active constraint so this rand c for kind and a constraint for source randomization can fail your code was conflicting the constraints if it is not followed between these values then the randomization is failed and you should have to also always check this status of failure so through any one of the techniques i am using an assertion technique here so you can check using your conditional statements or you can check using a conditional operators you can check using your case statements etc 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 so we have ran case also to check that etc etc so i am just checking an assertion because assertion is a very good uh, uh, status checker so where it will be checks not only um, the randomized value failure it is also checks for uh, an a, an a signal change over also so so that so we'll have a more appearance so that's why i'm going with an a assertion so if you don't check the variable may get unexpected values causing your simulation to fail so that is what the result of an a randomization so always you need to check this status and you need to make sure the status is passed or status is failed so if status is failed you need to look at on more on these values so if you look at on uh, if your failures are there so then so if you didn't check then the whole uh, simulation will be goes to an a failure so what is the things we need to look at on how well so you need to do an a constraints so how well you will solve this constraint so that so your status always will be passed than an a failure so <coughs> i will look for the constraint solver the constraint solver is an a solver to do this checking or to pass the conflicting on an constraints so which is a process of solving the constraint expressions handled by the system erilog constraint solver 
So, what is the constraints here? You are given this as a constraint, right? So, that itself you are cons constrained expression. So, what I am doing? I am solving that expression in the randomization pr principle through this constraint solve. So, what is the system very log? Two properties now, major properties and a randomization. One is randomization, which is checks for the status of the constraint. So, the second one is, so I am solving that constraint that is the error which is obtained on an a randomization will be solved through this constraint solve. The solver chooses the values which satisfies the constraints. So, that is what I told. So, it should have to be uh, satisfies. Let us say, see if I am having a source uh, of an 10 to an a 15 uh, bit values or a 10 to an a 15 value limitation. So, that itself will be the constraints that will be the I want to solve that. I what all the generation I will do it at an a randomization will be satisfies. So, by choosing those values uh, uh, for an a to satisfy those constraint values. So, the values comes from system very logs P R N G. So, what are all I am generating? So, generally I will call this as an a T P G values. So, which is considered there. So, which may be started with the initial values or initial test cases or initial test values. So, uh, random values which can be called as an initial seed. So, normally the initial seed uh, from the PRNG is an a default values which needs to be considered. The second values from the initial values will be the generalized random values. In a simulator uh, where it will be looks for these seeds, so will takes from the reference model um, and looks for the same seed is presented or not uh, from the same test benches uh, where you uh, generated this uh, uh, initial seeds and produces the same results that indirectly what I am specifying is your solver is the one which is there in your test bench which is done in your simulator which generates the same seed of the reference model in the same test bench are given to the same test bench and taken up all the results, the results obtained also the same what is expected. So, such that we can say the solver which is considered is an a specific to the simulation or the simulation tool. So, which are simulation environments where you are considering or you can generally say it as an a vendor specific. So, and a constrained random test which may not be get the same results we are expecting it to get, get the same results. If you run in any different simulators, so the the value the result value may be any different. So, or even on a different versions of the same tool, so the value will be goes on uh, varies also such so, so that. So, it is an a vendor specific, but may not be same in the in the same uh, tooled versions uh, or same tooled values. Uh, so, uh, may be a different environments, may be a different um, appearances may be considered over there. So, we know that how to randomize it and we know that how a solver will be thinks on this expression to be solved. So, such so that, so we can say uh, uh, what can be uh, randomized. System very log, so normally takes all the randomization 
on um, um, the integer variables uh, where uh, all the randomization will be occurs on the this integer variables. So, may be it is an a bit or may be it is as an uh, byte uh, what are all the data types you are defining it through the rand variable. So, with respect to that it will be taken. So, the variables may be an a two state variable or more than uh, that that is the four state types also. So, or generally we will define it as an a bits or simple sets of bits which either goes as an a two state or goes as an four state variable types. What it will be randomizes? You can define it two state or a four state, but the randomization will takes only with the two state values. Why it will takes only with the two state values? So it will consider all the values as an a zero or a one. So not with an a z or an a x. So it says an unknown values. If I generate this z or a x also, there is no meaning. Uh, for me to define those appearances. So, that is why. So, I will generally take up the two state values. We can go with four state also, but so the, the solver will consider the randomization only for these two state values. So, which cannot have an a random strings, uh, which cannot generate the total random strings also. So, uh, so that so, the whole generation or what role you are randomizing it should have to be considered from your constraints or considered from your solver, constraint solver also. So, that is why. So, once you are declaring an RAND function um, or an RAND C function or once you are going for an a randomizing the values to check its status. Our major aim is to look at on the constraints, uh, how well your constraints will be considered for those variables, uh, <coughs> either through an a two state or through an a four state. So, normally it will be works, uh, the constraint solver works to take up only through these uh, two state uh, values. So, how to look at on this constraints. So, let us look at on. So, we have an more than one uh, random values. So, which will be linked or which will be relationized between uh, their uh, value assignment, their uh, consideration uh, uh, which needs to be um, uh, taken care. So, now let us say the system very log chooses random values, so that the expressions are true. So, we will think that the expressions are uh, should be true. So, let us look at on how you can declare it. I am declaring a class, I am just defining it. So, I am taken an a variable called as an age, which is an a two state variable, because I declare it as a normal bit with 32 bit values. I will assign a constraint for this age, the age is between 12 to an a 20, 12 to an a 20 to define it as an a teenager. Is it considered that age in this constraints? No, because so it is not declared either as an arand or as an arand. So, once you are defining an constraint, so, the constraint is nothing but, so putting a constraint values to randomize it, so, so that to generate the randomize, so, so that, so this age should be either should be an rand and an range. If it is an a constraint with the random class, so then uh, let us say, I am defining it as an S team, I am defining as an a constant bit just address 42 bits, uh, 32 bits, I am defining it as an a 42 values. I have a read write control, which is enumerated stem e, rand c stem e kind, 
enumerated variable. So, rand bit which is taken it as an a length, source and a destination. Rand C is a constrained one, rand bit is an uh, is an a normal randomized value. It is takes and data types of enumerated either read, write or a control. So, this kind will take uh, enumerated variable either as in a read, write and an a control. So, let us define this constraints and also I am defining a constraint test also. So, congestion test also whenever this variable fails to define its value or define more than two values at a time. So, then there is uh, I will say the congestion test will be uh, failed to appear. That. So, let us look at on I will defining a constraint for this values as an system I am taking a length from 1000 0 to 1000. I am defining a congestion test which is occurred for this from 0 to 1000. So, whenever this congestion test is passed I will define a source. Source will takes the address from congest address that is 42 to an a 42 plus 100 that is 142 this address is varies from 100 to and 142 values that is the destination address. Source address is just as an a 42 I am defining a congestion. So, to test that. So, if the congestion test is failed, so it is not 0 or sorry it is not 1. So, then I will take the source address as an 0 2 to 10 bits which is defined and 100 to 107. So, which is definable. So, the bit size I am going on varying from here to uh, 0 to these values. <coughs> so, there is a total class I am defining. I am having a constraint block, I am having an a classes which is defined for this variable. So, what is the simple expression which is taken to define or to take up this constraint to check at an a constraint values. So, we can have an a decrement operator, we have an a or comparator operator, we can have an equivalence operator, we have an equal than uh, greater than or less than or equal to greater than or equal to or an, an, an indirect uh, forwarding operators in an expressions. These are the four operators which can be used in a solver to check the expressions uh, or to define the expression to check its status of the values. So, I will take one the equivalence checking. The most common mistake with the constraint is trying to make the an assignment in a constraint block that is I will check the uh, reference module and the executable module both are same that is why I will take an equivalence block, but it can only contains an expression. So, but it may not be derivable. So, to define these expression values. So, instead of this equivalence operator I will use a set of random variables to uh, assign the values. So, that is why I am generating an a low, medium and a high. So, I am putting a constraints bad low to medium, medium to high. So, that may be an a definable value. Let us simply I will put a value let us say low as an a 20, medium as an a 224 and high as an a 164. Is it a comparable? So, no it is an incorrect order it is an failure right because my order should be from low to medium, medium to high. You can seek it out. Low is correct, but medium and high should be uh, interchanged, right. So, that is why it is failed. So, again, so low will be 114, medium will be 39 and high will be 189. High is correct, but low and medium should be interchangeable. So, so that it is failed. Low will be 186, medium will be 148 and high will be 161. It is 
differently ordered so so that so it is fade so low will be 214 medium will be 223 and high will be 201 again so there is an indifference between these two these three so, so that it is also fade the results will be incorrecting the order the, the generation itself will be incorrecting the order so, so that all randomization check results will be an zero class order let us interchange this so let us look for this so i am putting a two constraints low is less than medium use only an binary constraints to do this a medium is less than an high value so then how many are matching so i will check only between these two i will say pass or fail i will check between these two and i will say pass or fail so here it is passed it is fail here it is passed it is fail right similarly it will be goes on this way so weighted distribution so what is the things here so i am not making out any measurable weights for this randomization of parameters because all my probabilistic up generation of these values so for the rand uh, data type <coughs> may not be weighted may not be measured with respect to some values so, so that it goes on varies with by giving out their uh, appearances so so that i will make it more uh, proper distribution through this weighted distributions so this weighted distributions let us say so here i will say the low should have to vary from the low should have to vary from the low should have to vary from 10 to 10 to 20 medium should have to vary from 100 to 220 high should have to vary from 300 to 400 something like this i will put a limit i will put a weight so the difference of the low variation is 10 the difference on the high variation is 100 so the difference on the um, high uh, medium variation is 100 and high variation is 200 so this is the weight i am putting to measure the low or to generate the low high and medium or any rand variable so this weighted distributions i will done using an a distribution operator named with an a dist dist operator allows you to create weighted distributions so that some values are chosen more often than others the distribution operator takes a list of values and a weights with respect to the values the weights are gen given out or with respect to the weights the values are given out so like the values and weights which can be constants or an variables so which can be defined through an a, a, a integeral values so normally uh, it's a range which is given to define that values that's what i defined there so which is separated in a two ways so one is an a, a two operators one is an equivalence separation so which is goes with um, colon equivalence and another one is an or operation which is our additive operation which is goes with an a, a, a colon with an a pipe so the values i am not saying the values should be an a rangeable the weights should be an a rangeable so the value the weights can be an a single values also as we defined here so a 10 so the difference is 10 that is a single value so if i define the value range it 
should have to vary from 10 to 20. So then the value from so 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So up to that values can be defined. So that values can also be a range, low and an high. So now you see that the low and the high will be separated by a quota. So this operator specifies the weight is the same for every specified value in the range. So if I define so 10 and a 20 varies from 10 to 20. So, the difference will be the same, the weight will be the same. So, you can see that 10, then I am going to an 11, then I am going to an 12. What is the weight of 10 to 11? 1, 11 to 12, 1, right. So, that is the difference of the values, that is the weight, it is the same. So, within the range specified. So, whereas in this operator, specified. So, the weight is to be equally divided between all the values. So, let us say, so how many values I have? I, am, I have an, a 10 values here. These 10 values are 10 weighted values are equally distributed between these values. It is a 10 values equally distributed between the 10 values or all the values. Let us take an, a simple example to do this. So, I am defining a rand int source destination constraint C destination source destination. So, I am putting a weight 0 to 40 for destination. So, which is also takes so first th four values uh, three values as an weighted as an a 60 plus a source is 0 what is the weight? The weight is 40 by 220. What is the total value I want to count here? The total value is 40 here. What is the total value? 4 to 60. So, what is the total 60 plus 40 that is 100 sorry 100 into double that is 220. So, put out of 220 it is uh, 110 double it is 220 it is said that it is 40 to 120 source is 1 it is goes to an so 60 to 120 so you can see that if it is 0 it is 40 so it is 40 if it is 1 it is goes with an 60 60 by 1 220 if it is 2 again 60 by 220 3 60 by 220, this is the weight is given. Right. Similarly, I can put it for any destination. <coughs> so, 0 odd with 40, 1 to 3 odd with an a 60, 0 I will go with an 40 because only one value the distribution uh, the distribution is same, so one value. So, but here in 1, 2, 3, I have a 60, 60 divided by 3 I want to do. So, such that, so it will be 20. The 1 is measured for 20 out of 100, 2 is measured for 20 out of 100, 3 is measured with 20 out of 100. As it is an equal distribution, the total value which is appeared for the weight will be 40 plus 60. Why it is doubled here? So, because it is an same operators 4 into 100, 400. So, as I am distributing it is for two ranges, one range here and one range here. So, that, that it is divided by total value how much? 40 plus 60, 100, right. 100 into how many values I have? 0, 1, 2, 3 into 400, 4 that is 400. Right? How many weightages I have? I have two weightages. Here one, here one. Two. It is divided by two. That is two hundred. Right? How many times I want to vary this in a ten times? Right? So for that it is plus twenty. Totally it will becomes two twenty. But it is not the case here. 
it is only an a distribution that is 60 plus 40 that is an 100 so for that it is goes with an 100 so dynamically changing distribution weights so with respect to that's what i told this is the statical distribution this is the dynamic distribution with respect to your definable values so i have a bus uh, which is needs to be operated <coughs> so let us take so i am interconnecting the bus so which takes the byte value word value and a long word value so i am creating a class as an a bus operation so i am enumerating with either as an a byte word and a long word to take the value that is the length i am defining length of the operation bus operation so i am defining a length as an rand what is the distribution to consider for this length which is an distinct constraint so i am defining a bit value w byte is 1 w word is an a 3 long word is an a 5 all are 32 bit of size so now i am putting a constraints now I am choosing a random value for this byte that is byte is randomized here so that is why I can use it in a constraints byte what is the value I am putting I am putting a value for w byte choose a random of w byte word w word long word is a w long variable choose a random length using a variable so that is a, this is how it is not defined statistically so how you defined it here right so it goes on varies so the weight is goes on varies with respect to what the value it will be taken so what the value which is defined for the length here so it goes on varies so that is why I am calling it as an dynamically changing distribution weights so this distribution weights is goes on changing randomly so how this uh, values will be considered through an uh, another operator called as an inside operator so inside operator is a operator which is defined for your set of values uh, or if you want to create an a set of values uh, for an uh, operator so then we will go with an inside operators so here there is no inside operator right because you are defining the values if you are choosing that dynamicity with respect to randomly automatically definable so then we will use an inside operator so which is defined through an a membership set set membership so which takes up the value the system very lock solver will go on choosers between the values in the set with equal probability which is defined also uh, which is considered also unless you have other constraints on the variables so you are not defining these values to be goes on happening so rand int set c which is a random variable int low and high which is definable range this is my variable for this variable I am defining a range as low to high as it is a rand so I can use it on a constraints I am defining a range C inside is a operator which automatically chooses the value for low uh, between low and high for this variable so low is less than low will be equal to C less than or equal to C so c is less than or equal to high values that is the c will be appears uh, between low and high value <coughs> so how you can specify it let us say so rand bit b of 7 bits so now where, where to where very 2 to the power of 0 to 2 to the power of 6 so that is 0 to 125 similarly so e will be the variable which 
is a rand which varies from 0 to 5. So, that E will take the value from 0 to 2 to the power of 5. There is a range what I am defining it. Constraint C range C inside dollar foot Q I am defining the dollar can be a 0, 1, 2, 3 anything. So, its default value is 0. So, 20 dollar I do not know the maximum or do not know the minimum I can segregate these two between 20 and a 4. So, between 4 and a 20 I do not have any other values to be defined. So, 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 that B takes the value from 0 to 4 or 20 to 127. Similarly, so E takes the value from 0 to 4 and 20 to 63. What is the maximum limit of E is a 63 up to a 63. <coughs> so, inverted random set constraints, constraint C range. So, I can use an exclamatory symbol C inside low and high. So, it is reversed you can see that it is the generalized way it is the inserted <coughs> inverted way C less than or equal to low or C greater than high value. So, the inside operator is also used inside your arrays. So, rand int f I am just looking at a Fibonacci series to be generated five values of the Fibonacci series which is given as an that fab I think you know this symbol right which is assignment symbol. So, fab fib first 0 is 1, 1 is 2, 2 is 3, 3 is 5, 4 is 0 to 5 or you can take it 1 to 5 also. Okay. So, 5 set of Fibonacci values will be assigned as this. Constraint C Fibonacci F inside Fib. What is F? F is a rand variable. So, for that I am giving an F. So, total array is inserted to the Fib. This is expanded into the following set of constraints like this constraint C, so which can also be written F is equal to Feb 0, that is now F is 1, what is we assigned it, right. So, F Fibonacci series 1, what is you are assigned 2, 2, now F is 2, F Fib 2, Fib 2 is what 3, 3 is assigned. So, F Fib 3, so 5 is assigned, F Fib 4, 8 is is what the equivalency between these two and this. Conditional constraints, system Verilog support two implication operators, one is a forward and another one is an if else. So, these are all the operators we need to remember inside operator which can be used independently to define the range or which can be used with an defining the maximum ranges which uses with an a dynamic cues right. So, which can be inverted also or which can be used inside your uh, arrays uh, 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 which can be seen. So, also which can be taken care with the two operators uh, uh, which needs to be uh, considered also uh, with respect to uh, those values. So, you find an, uh, an uh, else. Uh, so, class uh, let us take an example class block with implication operator, class bus operator constraint C I O, I O space mode. So, I am using an implication mode. So, that I O space mode which is an a variable constrained rand variable which takes an address of 1 for its 32 the address values. Constrained block with an if else same thing can be used with an if else also. Let us take C length read write. So, I am taking length. If operand is read, so then I will read the value. 
लेंथ इन साइड बाइट टू बाइट एस बाइट टू लॉन्ग वर्ड सो आई एम रीडिंग फ्रॉम बाइट टू एंड लॉन्ग वर्ड सो एट टू एंड थर्टी टू सो यस इफ इट इज नॉट ए रीडिंग सो देन आई एम जस्ट मेकिंग इट टू अजैन आई एम राइटिंग इट लॉन्ग वर्ड एज एन लेंथ आई एम जस्ट मेकिंग इट टू अपियर सो दट इज वॉट इफ एल्स इट इज सिंपल कंडीशन विच मेक्स इट एन इन साइड सो बाइ डायरेक्शनल कंस्टेंट सिस्टम एरे लॉ कंस्टेंट्स आर बाई डायरेक्शनल विच मीन्स दैट द कंस्टेंट्स ऑन ऑल द रैंडम वेल्यूर्स आर सॉल्व कंकरेंटली पैर लली so this is the one constraint c1 this is the second constraint c2 so both are solved parallelly so both are works parallelly in both the directions so the so that i will call it as an bi directional constraints so what are all the things i can do i can do an adding removing uh, etc etc on a constraints on one variable which affects So if the value chosen for all the variables that are related directly or indirectly. If it's a bidirectional constraints, I will take up the Rand logic, which is R S T. So R is less than T, S is equal to R, T is less than 30, S is greater than 50. So what I am taking the solution for this. So look at look at on this. So I have a variable. Solution is a. First solution a. What is our value? Randomly I am chosen as in 26. So you can check it out. T will be 27. What is the condition? R is less than T. Is it that 26 less than T value? So yes is equal to R. So such that I will assign R value 26 to an yes. So T is less than 30. T is less than 30. T is greater than 25. So first solution is 26. Similarly, B 26. So then it should be other than this. That is a 28. So now it should be same as this. That is a 26. The solution C is 26 and 29. Same as. So D, I am changing now R randomly. Randomly, it is taken 27, so it is 28 as it is here. Same thing for other two cases. Solution probabilities. What I am looking at here, so in all these things. So what is the solution I will get? What is the exact solution found by the random constraint solver, which may not be guaranteed? Our system error log will not be guarantees. It is an, a correct solution to you, but it is an probabilistic solution which is given to you. So, but you can influence the distribution. You can change the distribution to give out the similar solution. So, same solution. So, may not be uh, exactly corrected solution. I am looking at. So, it is the similar solution. At any time, we work with random numbers. we have to look at thousands or millions of values to average out of the noises so you have to look at thousands of at the time varies the values is also goes on varies varies for that and the values will be put on to and a system to check out these thousand values in a different solutions or different constraint solution changing the tool version and a random seed can cause different results also let us look at on so this is the unconstrained one i am not putting any constraints i have a two variables x and a y x is an one bit it takes zero or a one so y is an a two bit it takes zero one two three. i am not putting a condition so i am just generating an x and a y for different solution let us say The A solution is zero zero, the B solution is zero one, C solution is zero two, D solution is zero three, E solution is one zero, F solution is one one, G solution is one two, I H solution is one three. What is the probability of appearance? It is just a solution for how many solutions probability solutions have eight solutions. What is that? 
obtained one one out of eight. All are one out of eight. This is the one out of eight. This is also one out of eight. This is the O one out of eight. So this is all one out of. Eight. If I consider any two solution, so then it is two out of eight. If I consider three, let us say four four solution, that is it is will be four out of eight. If I consider all the solutions, then it is eight out of So class with an implication. So let us say, so the same variable I am putting an constraint now. X will be zero, implied with y will be zero. So if x is zero, then the y will implied with an a zero. Let us say the first solution is zero zero. It is one of the two solutions which is obtained. Okay. So what is the two solution? X is zero and a y is zero. It is the two solution. So in the second case, so x is zero but y is one. So what is the solution obtained? This is not passed, right? So such so that it is a zero probability of appearance. See, zero two, so it is also an unprobability because it is should have to be implied with a zero. Zero three, it is also an unimplied solution. But When x is not equal to zero, that is, let us say it is takes one one one. When it is takes one one one, the probability will not be defined. This is not appeared. This implication is not appeared. So that, that the probability of solution will be out of this eight. The probability of solution will be one. This probability of solution will be one. This probability of solution will be one. This probability of solution will be one. So it is randomly generated. Okay, uh, so I will stop here. So thank you. Uh, we'll take up this in the uh, uh, next uh, session.